So I did a poll the other day and I asked if you boys wanted to see me do some VFX tutorials on my VFX videos. And surprisingly, overwhelmingly, you boys said yes. Now, in today's video, you're going to learn how to do this. <laughs> And hopefully, if you really like these videos, I can maybe show you how I make $500 to $1,000 extra a month with visual effects. Alright, let's get straight into this. First off, open up After Effects. I used to use HitFilm Pro, but now I use After Effects because there are so many benefits. After importing our clip here, we're going to right click, track and stabilize, and then we're going to track the camera. This is going to make sure that the moon stays in place. Now that that's finished, what we can do here is we want to draw a circle around where we want the moon's general position to be in. Right click, create null and camera. All right looking good so now we're gonna have to actually put the moon in so let's create our moon now there's two ways you can do this you can do it this way where i did in this video or you can do it the way i'm about to show you right now which is the more realistic looking so open up blender if you don't know what blender is it's a 3d program where you can animate 3d objects and create 3d objects we're going to shift a and create this sphere Make sure you smooth it out after that. Go over to this texture tab here, and we are going to assign it its texture. So now we're going to go on the internet and type in moon texture, and then just save one of these textures and make sure that these textures are high quality, above HD. Because if they're not, once the moon gets close to the camera, it's gonna look blurry and pixely and we don't want that. That'll definitely make it look a lot less realistic. So now we're going to open it and assign our texture on the sphere. So it looks okay right now, but what I want to do is go over to the shading because I want the texture to be more rough and 3D. It looks fine right now, but it's a little, it's too smooth. So in shading, what we're going to do is duplicate this right here. We're going to assign the color on this height, on the displacement, and we're going to put the displacement on the displacement on the material output. Looks confusing at first, but literally just copy what you see here and put it on your sphere. And now we can play with the scale to get the exact sort of moon surface texture that we want, the sort of roughness of it. Now what we got is the moon here so we're just going to pull it upwards and we're just going to try and match its position to where it looks in our film so our footage has the camera angled upwards obviously and that's what we're going to do we're going to first move the moon and then we're going to try and match the lighting so as you can see the sun is on the bottom left of our footage so we're going to adjust the light's position and then where it says power here we're going to increase it until it looks like it's shining on the moon well enough looking pretty good so far now what we need to do is move the camera so i'm going to go into the properties and lock the camera as i move my mouse so it's much easier for the camera to move with me just adjust it to the correct position. Now it's time to start on the animation. So we're going to right click, insert keyframe, and then we're going to click location and rotation. What that does is that sets the start of the keyframe to the location where it's at right now. So now we move the moon towards the camera because it's obviously falling towards the camera. Then we adjust the rotation and then we insert another location and rotation keyframe as so. As you can see, that's pretty good. It's really close to the camera. We got that good old megalophobia effect. Now, normally with these things, you'd want to make a green screen if we're transferring it over to After Effects. 
but we don't need to do that simply because the background is black and all we have to do is really set it to screen once we're in After Effects, but I'll show you that in a second. Now I was messing around with cycles because as you can see, cycles looks a lot more realistic on the moon, but it drastically reduces the rendering time and it also makes the moon disappear a little more than I want it to. In theory, you could add an extra light, but this is a quick and easy tutorial, so we're just gonna keep it as is. Plus, I mean, it looks realistic enough, let's be honest. So I'm just gonna render this as a PNG sequence because every time I render it as an MP4, I always get these weird glitches where it doesn't render the whole thing. So let's just do PNG sequence. Back in After Effects, we're going to import all of these and make sure you check this box. And now our PNG sequence is imported as video. Now, honestly, it's very simple. We're gonna take the pick whip tool and put it on the track null. And as you can see, it's still not tracking, but that's because we need to check this box right here, which it puts it in 3D space, which the track null is already in 3D space. So it needs that the moon to be in 3D space as well. Moon's all out of whack, so we're just going to adjust it and resize it to the correct position. Now this is very important to get rid of this black box around the moon. What we need to do is click on where it says normal here and make the blend mode screen. And now I'm just going ahead and adjusting it, adjusting its position, adjusting the duration of the entire thing so it matches perfectly with our original footage. And there you go, you're basically done. Now to get a cool siren effect or even people screaming in the background effect so it feels more real we're just gonna go on to youtube and type in either screams sound effect or siren sound effect and i'm just gonna copy the url of the siren effect that i like i like the purge's siren effect first movie was better than the other ones and then we're going to go to this youtube downloader you can really use any for this you don't have to be too picky since we're just getting audio and then we're going to download it, import it in our footage, and there we have it. If you want to see more content like this, if you have a specific request on one of my BFX videos that you want to see me do a breakdown of, feel free to just Shoot it in the comments. I definitely want to do a lot more of these. Also, if you're in need of a VFX artist or video editor, shoot me an email. I am taking on new clients, so yeah. Also, real quick, down in the description below, click the link and you will be redirected to the VFX beginners course. From beginner to intermediate. My comprehensive course that will fast track your progress.